When you called yourself a split soul, I didn't understand. Maybe because you and I perceive the radical as undivided. Some say radicalism is born of judgment, but you taught me that it's born of grace. You taught me radical grace. When we sat together, you and I, to study Talmud, we read about the four rabbis who entered the orchard, the Pardes. Pardes is a four-letter Hebrew acronym. Pshat, simplicity. Remez, allegory. Drash, inquiry. And Sod, secret. When you enter the orchard, the orchard is within you. Simplicity represents your political activism, founding shelters for battered women, putting yourself in the breach for Palestinians, for the gay community, and for the Black Panthers. Inquiry is the lawyer and the teacher within you, incessantly striving towards a humanistic interpretation of Judaism, always reminding us that the human is created in God's image, every human, every God. Allegory that's your tremendous love for art, theater, and the beauty of human creation. And the sod? Who knows your secret? Maybe it's the core that defies words that drove your infinite passion for justice, your passion that came from love. And maybe your secret is the secret of the wounded healer. No one knows how many wounds you carry within you. You thought? that if you healed society from its ailments, if you protected the weak from the strong, you could heal your secret wounds. But the passing of time taught you the curse of the shaman, that the wounds you carry will not heal because they are the source of your power to heal others. Here in the funeral, all of you who came from near and far to give my mother her last honor, all of you are witnesses to her struggle for justice. Your bearing witness will help guard the substance of Shulamit Aloni, not only the name Shulamit Aloni. So long as we bear witness to her acts, she will continue to live among us. I would like to end with the memory of her weakness. So beautiful she was also in her weakness. When the mind fades and the heart remains open to love as the heart of a child, one door shuts, another one opens. Every day we'd sit together to admire the beauty of her cypress tree and the blooming bougainvillea wrapped around its top. Every day we'd speak about how beautiful this tree is. And at this point, my mom, who lived her entire life in Hebrew, which is the language of the sovereign, began in the last days of her life to speak Yiddish the language of exile, the language of the weak who long for their mother. And so we sang the Yiddish Rezale, which Grandma Ida and Grandpa David used to lull us to sleep with. I was in Ljubljana with Slavoj Žižek when the news of your death reached me. Slavoj didn't know what to do with it. He patted me on the shoulder so fiercely I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. That's how clumsy he was in his sympathy. Finally, he said, Communists show their love with bureaucracy, and proceeded to purchase my flight ticket back home. As I was waiting for the execution of Slavoj's love at the hotel, longing for a good Jewish hug, I received an email from my friend, the refusenik pilot, Jonathan Shapira. Dear beloved Udi, I found a violin in a second-hand shop here in freezing Maine, and I recorded Rezale on my cell phone for you, so that you can sing along to it, even though it's a bit of key. And so
ככה השכינה, שלמרות שאנו לא מאמינים בה, קראה לי אימי לפרדסה, פרדס האם הגדולה. היא קראה לה בלשון אימינו, קום, קום, קום. בואי 